Hello and welcome to Exploring with me, Craig Duncan. I'm exploring today Stonehenge, which is just over there. You can just see a bus here carrying uh, people to the Henge. This is a new system they have in place. I kind of decided rather than pay the £25 they're asking, which includes the bus fare and everything, presumably, and the exhibition that they have here, I've decided not to pay that and um, go to a nearby village instead, which has a stone circle that I can go into. But something that is interesting about this place, and I really like it to be fair, is they've built a little like medieval village or more earlier than medieval, Stone Age village, I guess. Don't know what age it is, I need to read up on it. They have a, 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 a fiberglass stone here to show you how it was transported and the stone would have been put on some ro some logs, some round logs and rolled quite a huge distance to here and at the very tip of the stone you can see there's a little uh, a little sticky out part so they can put the, uh, the vertical piece on the top and uh, I always thought that the stones were as deep underground as they were above ground but judging by that I don't think that could be the case. The stone that's on display here is, uh, they're called sarsen stones, it's from the inner horseshoe of uh, Stonehenge over there and um, they couldn't actually make a replica, it wouldn't be possible to make a replica today. Don't ask me why, but uh, that's what it says on the signage there and the replica they have there is of stone number 60. It would take about 100 men to drag that on those rollers uh, and a, a little huts are supposed to be indicative of the uh, shelter that they must have had because people would probably have had to have left their families to work on this project and although we're not really sure how society was structured back in the day when they built it uh, it must have had a hierarchy system like a leadership system so presumably there were organizers could have been built by slaves who knows uh, so fascinating so little we know and uh, a monument like that to exist today keeps us all wondering and the mystery surrounding it has people in their millions flocking here every year uh, I've been six times and I'll come again because it's it's just a thing of wonderment you should come and look at it uh, I say I've seen it before I'm not paying 25 pounds not today Although Stonehenge is a fantastic place to go and visit, I want to come here, which is Avesbury, which is about a 40 minute drive north of Stonehenge. And uh, this is an associated site, it's all part of the World Heritage. These are um, Neolithic stone structures, circles, uh, within larger monuments, which are well preserved. And, you know, we're talking 3,300. BC to 1200 BC. So we're talking like 6,000 year old monuments here. And this is my favorite. And if you can't get into Stonehenge because you can't afford it, come to this one. It's only a little drive up the road and this one's completely free. This is an inner ring, middle ring and an outer ring. This outer ring here has uh, got a bank, got a high bank there. And then there's a ditch directly below it, just, just in front of this rope here. This rope's been put here to stop people going over there to protect it. But um, I don't know about you, but whenever I see a, a bank and a ditch, that kind of says protection, it's designed to keep people out. But it's usually designed to keep, keep people out from the other side, get, stop people getting over the bank. But here, it's the bank's on the inside of the ring, so bank goes that theory. This is pretty amazing. So there's four trees. And look at the roots coming through the ground. It's amazing that trees produce this. It's 
scale of rootage. You just see it go all the way down, all the way down over there. Phenomenal. People are hanging things up there. These trees are pretty old. Got to be careful how I step here. Let's see what the sign says about these trees. These venerable old veteran beech trees are suffering increasingly from carved graffiti and other physical damage. Please don't damage the trees. Beech trees have a very thin bark. Uh, I wish it told us a little bit about them, but these right, there's a lot of fairly recent graffiti been scrawled onto this tree. I think I'm pretty lucky to be able to hawk amongst these trees today because I think in the future these will just be roped off and it's fantastic that they're not and that we can still come up here. This is right on the bank so these are up on the bank and they've cut a road through the bank there uh, and the walk continues along the bank here and then hopefully we will see some more stones. This is amazing. You can see the bank is going all the way around and then just here you can see a line of, I can't, no, don't know if they're inner stones or not, well, well inner outer stones, I don't know. We'll see when we get there, but there's a lot of them. This site, along with Stonehenge, are classed as what they call World Heritage Sites, which means that they're not only of historic value to the country, they're of historic value, or historic value to the world, they're of historic value to humanity. So it's probably the highest you can get and this is the biggest stone circle in the world. So, again, lucky to live in this country with such amazing things. There's a really good view of the bank there. You can see here how they're switching between people going across there taking this route so everyone's taking this route now in the fullness of time and move the rope over here so you don't take this route or something I guess so here are the stones themselves and they look absolutely phenomenal they're huge big big stones and you might think well they're just big rocks no they are cut these things have been cut by people's hands and placed here so they're incredible things see see how thin it is i mean they're very crudely cut but they are cut and i love all the what's it called lichen ladybird there and they've got sheep everywhere just living amongst it which i also love Just like free to, to roam around with the sheep looking at the stones and uh, I wish I could tell you more about these but we don't know we don't know anything about them which is what's so mysterious about them and they're still held today as religious monuments and a big deal there's some sheep just here Be careful not getting too close to the sheep but they are literally <laughs> hello sheep really not that bothered like there's a sheep praying to the stone here look see how, how thin it is I'm no expert, but that's been cut, right? You can see that there are natural sort of seams in the stone here. So maybe it was easier than I'm making out to splice down. They are incredibly crude. This here is, uh, I think, a marker of where a stone was, or would have been, for us all to enjoy. And as you can see, the stones are on the other side of the road as well which currently has cars driving right down the middle of the circle which is great 
The reason cars are driving right down the middle of the circle is that um, in medieval times and early modern times, as the village grew, it encroached itself onto the circle and uh, people just died. You know, there was no significance for them. These stones weren't significant. So they just started helping themselves to the stones and building properties across uh, the circle. And of course now, massive legal issues around you know, shutting that road off and making the road go around the, the bank. So it's very unlikely that will ever happen because um, these properties are all owned by people legally and you can't take property off people. It's theirs, unless they sell it. Who's going to buy it? Who's going to knock it down? These are all listed buildings. You can see here the markers are coming down here, continue around right up to this wall and then they would continue on through that property's garden there. And then over here you have a, an avenue of stones coming out from the centre I think, I don't know. So you can definitely imagine there was some sort of religious ceremony taking place. Uh, Wiltshire is riddled with circles and stones, Stonehenge, thousands of years old, you know, for the sun to pop up every morning and then to go down at the end of the day must have been completely magical, wasn't it? It would, having no knowledge of what we know now about science and how things work, it must have been mind-blowing and if you had a few elders saying you need to pray to that sun, you need to pray to the sunrise every morning or maybe once a year or certain time of the year, I don't know. You can imagine that. It was so important that people were happy to put the effort in to create these things. I think this is a circle in the inside. This is the inner circle, I think. There's a big chunky marker. And you can see that just here, it's like a little inner circle. So it's not an avenue, like I said, thinking I know everything. Maybe this marks the centre, I think it does. So all this is missing. All that's missing. The other side of the road, the stones continue. Let's go over there and have a look. Isn't this good? Uh, I absolutely love this kind of thing. Sun's getting low, I need to find a camping spot for tonight. Shadows are long. But uh, let's just look at these rocks and then and get ourselves gone. So here's a, 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 a ring of stones right next to the bank. And again, there's markers, presumably marking stones that were taken. And it looks like they staggered what they took. It was staggering that took them, but it looks like they staggered it. So let's take every second one and then the ring's still there. Maybe that's what they were thinking back in the day. I'm making all this up, I don't know. You know, I'm walking past each one. This, there's scores of them and they're huge and if there was one on its own I'd have been spending 20 minutes just looking at it and I'm being spoilt for them so I'm just walking past them now but it seems a huge shame let's stop and look at this one again it's quite thinly cut it's definitely pointing towards that other marker there and then the other stone beyond Uh, you know, is there meaning in the fact that it's that shape? Ones over there look like they're falling apart. I don't think it matters, it just... It looks like it, all that matters is that the circle's marked. Visitors here who are like pushing prams and stuff, there's kids. It's Saturday today, so this is clearly like a day out. And um, you do wonder, you know, how, how much we do take these for granted if it just becomes like you know let's go for a little walk oh let's go look at the stones they're nice <laughs> this is amazing these things are incredible and uh oh i don't know i'm getting a bit snobby look at the size of this ditch 
You see that ditch? Look at the size of it. Super cool. I really love this stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little trip to Stonehenge and Avebury. Uh, I do have other videos where I visited uh, Rudston and some uh, larger uh, monoliths uh, that are uh, based here in the UK. I find stone structures, stone circles absolutely fascinating. Standing stones generally are my thing. I know nothing about them. I want to learn, but uh, it was too long ago for us to really know what was going on. And there's just so much mystery surrounding them. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please subscribe so you, and hit the bell so you get alerts when I do more. And uh, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or if you know anything about these things, write something down in the comments. And uh, until I make the next video, cheerio.